All right, what's up? My name's Tobias. Uh, this is my camper I was working on during the quarantine of COVID. Um, so yeah, I'll give you a little tour of what's going on. This is my third camper build. Um, and my first one was a van. My second one was a Tacoma with a small pop-up camper. And I realized that I was tired of setting things up every day, uh, having to pop up or set up to uh, go to bed and function in it. So this is the third evolution of a uh, camper I've been working on so yeah it's pretty much done at this point uh, the idea is that you can we really opened up the floor plan was the ability to just sleep with wise and, um, and then you can stand obviously without having to pop it up so yeah sleeping with wise opened up the floor plan quite a bit so this is a whole new design I guess I was trying something new this with this build uh, and I wasn't sure how it would work the idea was to minimize the wall thickness to allow um, for the most room inside to, like I said, sleep width-wise. So I used studs, uh, two-inch studs uh, from three-quarter inch plywood, and then it's sheathed with three sixteenth inch ply, and then it's used a method called poor man's fiberglass, which is what you roll wet wood glue, put in, I put on painter's canvas, and then wet wood glue on top, and I sectioned it out piece by piece and eventually yeah, coated the whole thing with this uh, PMF. Then had some friends, I really appreciate art, so I had my friends do some custom artwork on the sides. Um, but then we, I welded up a roof rack, we got four going perpendicular to the truck camper and then Trex roof decking going parallel to it. So you can fit a bunch of kayaks on there, whatever you're strapping to the roof, and then catch some cool sunsets with your friends. So this is uh, what catches most people's eyes and attention, the little wood burning stove. It's super cute, it's fun. I really enjoy making fires, especially when the weather's uh, all gone to crap. It's kind of nice to be like huddled up and have a, a live fire inside your rig. The other benefit is it's a nice dry heat. So for my instance, I like to do a lot of whitewater kayaking. I bring in light gear and it's hard to get it dry with some like a little buddy. So this is, gets ripping. It'll burn for like four to five hours. Uh, I was just out today cutting up some juniper, trying to get some more dense wood for the stove. So got uh, my main got a wood supply underneath here and behind the fridge. And just got a simple 12 volt uh, DC fridge, uh, 45 quart about suffice for myself you can freeze it if you'd like my solar and electrical you have your charge controller based up there nice and visible a 500 watt pure sign inverter and a little charge station here so you can plug in your phone and leave it in there it's not going to slide off and then it's a simple 100 milliamp hour deep cycle battery I used Baltic birch ply for the construction and all the cabinets. I'm a big fan of the end grain on it. You don't ever see any gaps or imperfections in it generally. You know, it's an extra 15 bucks a sheet, but it's super dense and good quality wood. Other than that, we have the main bed up top. It's a four foot by 6.1 foot bed, sleeps two underneath. You have room for general miscellaneous storage, and you can see the construction of the uh, bed itself. And then, yeah, have a nice open walkway 90% of the time. Then I'm a student, so I have a nice work desk area. Um, I can set up to do schoolwork. Simple as pulling this out. Yeah, so a whole bunch of room to do schoolwork or whatever you're up to. If you're not doing schoolwork, you're fitting more people in here. Like I said, you can sleep two up here and you can sleep one down here. This will pop down and fold into a, another bed. Uh, so windows, I pulled them off a old truck canopy. It's like a super cheap way, 100 bucks, and you can get you know four windows essentially. Um, so that's where these three came from. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so got general clothing storage underneath the seats here. What I figured out after my van build was, you know, you're going off-roading, things are moving all the time. Um, so 
originally I've, I've had drawers in my other builds, but things start to become skewed off center and not, not work as well. So pretty much to save weight and simplicity, I've gone to all cubbies for everything um, and netting when necessary. So uh, the kitchen over here, yeah, it's just got a Coleman stove, goes to a one gallon propane tank. The whole idea with this setup was A, it's simple and B, when it's nice out, these are on two little posts. I can pop the stove off, move it to the tailgate, so that way you're not like secluding yourself from the outside or the people that are camping with you. So that's the, the purpose is just a mobile spot where you can bump it up and down as necessary. And then, yeah, kitchen stuff, food, shoes, and bigger food storage. I have a Max Air roof fan. It pulls air in or out. Super helpful when you're cooking. Just sucks all the smoke out. You can see it's super dusty from that. Uh, generally, I have it in the out position. And then lighting. What I did do this year, which was awesome, is wire up two, stri uh, two light switches. So when you're in bed, you can flick it off and you don't have to bump down. So turn them on in two positions. And then just for some like nice little mood lights, different settings on the Christmas lights. It's a little less harsh. I decided not to do a wood floor or any sort of special floor. Once again, come from a kayaking background, you have a lot of water coming in and out. It just it causes uh, havoc on it. So just went for the old truck bed floor. We're up on the deck right now. Uh, like I said, the main idea was to be able to fit a lot of kayaks. You have this grid system, you can strap whatever you need up here a lot of kayaks up here and then to be able to catch the sunset and hang out with friends up here and have a beer so once again you have cross metal cross members are welded up going perpendicular and we have this trek stacking that's super sturdy uh, you can see up front we have a 200 watt uh, solar panel and for myself that provides all the energy i need i'm, I'm always got an abundance of that extra fuel got eight gallons i just Pick up that last week after almost running out of gas out in the Alvar Desert, so almost. Um, you got the roof vent here. This is able to move up and down freely, unobstructively. And we have our chimney that comes from our wood stove. It's uh, all double walled, insulated. Um, it's it was definitely a hard balance of finding height where you don't want. It's already the tallest thing, so you have to watch out for branches, and but also. Uh, keeping it as low as you can where you're not going to burn the deck. Uh, I'm always having to like eyeball where I'm going and I've definitely knocked off the cap uh, a handful of times. Luckily it's only a seven dollar cap. So. so it should be really waterproof the way I laid the fabric. Everything's um, started from the bottom of the camper and last up so that way it's it's overlapped where water uh, just beads off and it doesn't go into a seam ever. Um, my first rain I had, I found out I did not do enough layers of paint going across the roof and I did have some seepage that would actually go, because the canvas is so porous, it actually would sit and it step through the canvas. But after that, did a few more layers of paint and I haven't had any issues with leaking yet. But I know that's always a, it's been an issue in my last builds for, for sure. So I went back and forth during the build. Um, I knew I wanted a big open door, the idea being that it just, the idea is that you're parked at a real beautiful spot and just to be able to look out from where you're sitting and have this great view. But then again, you're like trying not to be completely exposed to everything. Um, so went back and forth between a big door and a small door. I ended up going big door. So yeah, just going across three three hinges. Took this off a truck camper or truck canopy. This has two rails that go into the side. You can lock it. It's a good way to secure it. The door is insulated like the rest of the camper with recycled denim. So it's not uh, it's not fiberglass that's gonna be like kind of harsh on your uh, lungs and breathing. Um, so yeah, that's packed into everything. And then I have 100 pound gas, gas struts on both, both sides here that lift it up and keep it up for you. Yeah, insulation wise, most of the all the ceiling and the doors use recycled denim and then I have three quarter inch uh, foam that goes in the walls. So I started this during the quarantine, had a lot of time on my hands and basically had a whole solid month to put towards it on and off. Um, 
So I'd say roughly a good solid month of work and then maybe a week scattered over another month and a half of just random projects. Like I said, it's not completely done. I need to do the trim for the cedar. But other than that, I'd definitely call this build complete. Um, and then costs, it's probably easier to break it down. The shell itself, if you were to exclude any electronics or electrical and without the wood stove, I'd probably put it at the $800 mark. You know, really, you're talking lumber. Yeah, really, you're talking just lumber, wood glue, and canvas, and paint, and all the miscellaneous that go in between there. And the, the metal for the roof rack and track. So, yeah, definitely little things add up. I'd say about 800 if you're just to do a shell. And then you add the big, bigger ticket items, the fridge, 800 bucks, the wood stove, you know, you're sitting at with the chimney assembly, you're sitting at probably in the $600 range. And then solar, probably about six all together. Um, then, thing with the wood stoves, they are really they're more practical or more fun than practical. You have to cut wood and get wood, and the time you need wood is when it's cold and wet, which is very hard and inconvenient. So I have like a little stockpile stored up, but then also to subsidize it, I'm about to install a diesel heater which is basically a rip off of an S bar heater and that's I'm gonna run both of those basically the wood stove <laughs> nice cozy feelings and the diesel heater when I don't feel like making a fire and truck wise I got this on a 2001 Toyota Tundra TRD off-road the camper you know honestly it's hard because I it was built the shell was built off the camper or sorry the truck and then we lifted it up and placed it on uh, and that took four people that was without the roof rack or the solar or anything so it's hard for me to guess weight but i, I reckon we're at the probably like the 400 500 pound with everything inside so i threw in airbags to help compensate for that got some bigger tires on the truck and yeah she cruises she sucks gas but it was a fairly cheap build overall i'd say with the truck and camper all together i'm probably into it like 12 or 13 grand but yeah, this has been my project and I'm very excited to be able to show you guys, you know, it's a little bit of art, a little bit of, you know, just functionality to go all together and yeah. And so thanks for letting me share with you guys and uh, you can let me know if you have any questions. Hopefully.